Hello everyone. Today I'm going to walk through a chapter three example that basically will include all of the topics discussed in this particular chapter to make sure everyone is comfortable with the uh, topics here. Okay, there we go. So <clears throat> chapter three, we discuss um, parameters, passing parameters, returning a value from your method, um, type casting, the printf command, string objects, uh, the scanner class, so we can make our programs interactive. Now, there are, of course, videos, uh, um, lecture videos for each topic separately. So if you need to learn more in depth, I would suggest watching those um, videos for those specific topics. But this particular chapter three example will be like a brief overview of um, some of the topics discussed, okay? Now, first thing first, we are dealing with passing of parameters. So what that means is now you will be creating formal parameters for your methods and passing values. From uh, starting in chapter one, we just created methods. And remember your method header, public static void, and then the name of it, I'm going to call it example one. All right. And we have had empty parentheses. Please make note, you only use string ARGS for your main method. It is only for your main method. Um, when you're getting ready to create your um, own methods, user-defined methods, and if you want to pass a parameter, you can. You just have to declare the type of values you will be passing. Now, in this particular example, I am going to go ahead and use each type and um, have multiple parameters, okay? So let's say we have a string object we want to pass. Um, let's call it F name, which would be the first name. Um, let's say we also want to have an int, okay? Let's call it year, it would be the year. Now notice I have two parameters here. These are called your parameters. I have two parameters here, one for a string, one for an integer, all right? And they're separated by commas. Each variable can only hold one value. So however many different types of or different items or values you have to pass, that's how many parameters you need to create. So here we're going to be, uh, we're going to put double um, and let's just say cost, okay? And of course you can do a char, you can do a Boolean, you can do any of the others that we've talked about. But for this particular example, I will keep it simple and go ahead and only use these three. Now, if you have multiple of the same type, of course, you will still have to have a separate um, a separate variable, okay? Um, let's just say int value, okay? So notice we have two integers, but they only store one value, so you would need separate um, variables for each, okay? So this is called passing parameters, all right? These are formal. This is your formal parameter. So that means you have declared variables of these types that will expect values of these types here, all right, when you call the method. All right, so inside, we're, we're going to do just random things. Um, let's say we're going to get information from the user. So this particular chapter, your um your program is interactive so that means now the user can enter information now what we're adding to our program is an import pack we're going to import a package which is our java.util now the java.util asterisk is the mo is the one that you should use throughout the semester because as we go throughout the chapters this particular package will allow you to use the different classes and objects that we'll need to complete each um, assignment. Now, I noticed some students um, do add scanner, the scanner package where you'll change this to scanner, but be mindful that only gives you um, access to the scanner class. So you would have more to remember as we're going forward, but I would suggest using this one, okay? 
The next thing we need is a scanner object. We need access to the scan. We need, a cre we need to create an object of our scanner class so that we can actually get input from the user. So something that I'm going to do just for example's sake, I'm going to get rid of this particular one since I've already indicated if you have multiple of the same type, you need um, different variables for each. But this particular one, um, this goes back to scope, all right? So I'll start here first and create our scanner object. So this is how we create our scanner object. Scanner, um, we'll call it input. This is the name of your object. It can be any name that you want. You need to be mindful of that when you're creating your programs, okay? It doesn't have to be console every time. System.in, which gives us access to um, the input device, okay? So notice that I've created the scanner object here inside of my main method. So it only exists inside of my main method. I can also a scanner object as a parameter. So I'm going to replace this one here and have a scanner object. You can use the same name or a different name. It doesn't matter. They're still different, okay? This one is still existing here inside of this method. Um, and this input here is existing inside of this method, all right? So you can use the same name or different. I'll use a different one just in case. Let's just put input um, two just for this example, okay? So that you know they are separate. They're different ones, okay? All right, so now what happens is we're going to actually pass information to this particular method. Let's go ahead to keep this particular example um, simple. I'm going to call my method, example one, and I'm going to pass my actual parameter. So let's say here, first name, and remember that a string has to include quotation marks. Um, then year, whatever the year is, this year, and what I'm making this video is 2023. Um, and then the next thing we are asking for is cost. So just a, a, a decimal amount, let's say um, $29.99. Um, just a random, these are all, all this is just random values just for the example's sake, okay? A comma. And then now we're expecting a scanner object, okay? We've created the scanner object here, so we're gonna pass a copy of it here. So we'll use that name there, okay? So basically, when this program is executed, example one, this method is called, and then it's passing a copy of each of these values. So professor will be stored in F name, 2023 will be stored in year, 2020, I mean, 2999 will be stored in cost. And input here is now passed to input two. All right. So, because the, and these here are your actual parameters. Okay. Now, um, once the method is called, what do we want to do with this information? Let's say we just want to print this information. Okay. Let's say we print whatever is in F name, which is professor, um, we'll concatenate. Um, let's do a backslash and um, move to the next line. And then we'll print whatever is in year. So year, concatenation, and then we wanna move to the next line. Whatever is in cost, let's print that. And remember, this example is just completely random just to discuss each topic. Backslash n, let's call it, um, move to the next line. Um, oh, we don't need to put this scan object, sorry. Um, that's it. Let's go back home. All right, semicolon. All right, so when this method is called, it's going to print these values, this information, okay? So let's compile this. And you'll see here, it just printed whatever the information that was given, okay? All right. 
All right, so now that's what we have for that particular example. So now let's create another method that will get input from the user, all right? So now here, public static void. Now you can actually use the same name here because we're gonna have different parameters, okay? So we're gonna say, and we're gonna call it input two as well. It's still different. This one will only exist here. This one will only exist here. And this one only exists here, okay? All right, what differentiates a, an example, it, I mean, a, a method is its signature. And its signature is however many parameters it passes. So notice here, I've used the exact same name, example one, example one, but the signatures are different. This particular example one only passes a scanner object as a parameter. And this particular method, only its signature, it passes multiple parameters of different types. Okay, so you can have a method that has the same name. It's just their signature has to be different. Or if you wanted to just use a different a different name, you can. Okay, but just to point that out. All right, all right. So in this particular one, we're going to ask for information from the user. Um, I'm going to get each type of information just to make sure everyone is understanding um the each method that you're supposed to use pertaining to what type of information. All right. Now, whenever you're getting information from the user, you need a prompt, which are which will be the instructions. You're asking the user for information. So let's say system.out.println. The prompt is going to say, enter your last name. All right. Um, last name generally is going to have one word, usually going to be one word. So, and also a name will be stored in a string. So that is text, right? So we're gonna create a string and I'm going to call it last name. And to secure one word, we have to use the scanner class method um, next, okay? Now we have passed a copy of this particular scanner object from main and we're passing it here. Okay, so a copy of it is here. So I'll use input two because that's what exists inside of this particular method. You use the name of the scanner object, the dot operator, and the method next. This will allow you to secure one word. Now, if I enter Davis dash John, if all that is together, no spaces, it'll take the entire portion. All right. If I enter Davis space John, it will only take Davis and John will cause an error in your program because it'll still be there, okay? Now remember, next only secures one word, okay? If you want to um, get the full name, let's say we ask for the full name. Let's just create a object um, here. Input two dot next line this means it will secure or retrieve a full line of text so if i put professor davis it'll retrieve professor davis and store it inside a full name okay this is we're not going to ask for the full name but this was just an example to show the difference between next and next line next one word Retrieve or line of text. Okay. All right. All right. So now let's say we ask for their GPA. Let's say system out dot print ln enter GPA period. All right, we know GPA is a decimal value. So this, the, the variable will be type double. So let's call it GPA. And we're gonna use the input to scanner object and next double. Okay. Let's say we're gonna ask for enter, let's say middle initial. 
all right now this will work different all right so we will get a char i'll call it initial input two dot now there is no such thing as next char all right we need to retrieve um the single letter the character so in order for you to do that anytime you want to do that you'll go ahead and use next to secure the method next to secure the full line of text all right let's say you ask the user to okay so that they enter their middle name i enter chanel that's my middle name it'll retrieve chanel all right but because it's a string, you can't store it in this particular variable. So I need to use, use the dot operator, the um, string method char at, character at. So it's gonna retrieve the character at location zero, all right? So that means it's going to return the letter S and store it in initial if I enter my middle name, okay? And last but not least, um, let's say enter year again. Uh oh, snap. You know what? Let's say enter your birth year. Enter your birth year. It's an integer, so int, we'll call it year uh input to dot next int all right so it's going to reach your even integer value all right so when this pro program is executed it's going to retrieve this information from the user and then it's going to um store it in these variables and then we can do whatever we want to do with it okay i'm going to copy this and do something similar copy but just change what was here. So here, um, instead of first name, we're gonna print last name because that's what we have here. Um, we do have, uh, let's do B year here. So we know that's the birth year, and then B year here. All right. Um, here we're going to do GPA. All right, and then concatenation backslash n concatenation and initial all right so now it's going to do each of those all right now we need to call the method don't forget to call your method um so we're going to call example one and pass the scanner object input all right because that's the name of it here in the main method so we're passing a copy of it here all right so let's compile that All right, so professor, the, the first part that we have now is asking for me to enter my name and you'll notice at the bottom is blinking. So now let's enter last name. My last name is Davis, enter GPA. Um, let's say 3.45, um, enter middle initial. Um, going to enter Chanel, but you'll notice that it is going to retrieve the S only um, for my birth year. And you'll see that it just prints all the information that was entered by um, by me okay now something that i want to point out so let's say here um i comment i remove this comment and put it here and and i say enter full name all right and then i change that here because i commented it out all right Let's compile that. All right, enter your full name. I'm going to put Professor Davis, enter GPA. Uh, what am I doing here? Oh. And then middle initial. I'm going to just put S here, and you'll notice that it'll still retrieve the same thing, return the, all right? Enter your birth year, let's say 1990. Um, and you'll see that it does the same thing. I thought it would do the pitfall, but I'm pretty sure if I had it in a loop, it would do the pitfall where you have to add the pitfall solution. So just make sure you check out the pitfall um, video, okay, for the pitfall. All right, 
<clears throat> the next thing here that I want to point out or do is um, returning, returning a value. So let's go ahead and so we don't use, lose much space here, um, visual. Let's do one here, public static void. Let's say for this one, um, example one, we won't pass any parameters, right? Um, this is just strictly example sake, all right? Let's say you want to return a value. So if you recall back in chapter one, this is our method header and a part of our method header is our return type. Void means we're not returning anything, okay? However, anytime you have any information and data here inside of a method, any of these method, in methods, and you want to return it, you will have to modify the return type, okay? So let's say in this particular one, um, we have, let's say a string. We'll just start with string. And we'll say professor. Now, it, it may seem um, pointless with, you know, it just being basic with this one name here. But remember, this is just basically for you to understand the concepts, okay? As your programs get larger, you will have multiple methods and you'll have values inside of those methods that you would want to get, um, you would want to use or give access to in other methods, okay? Because now name only exists inside of this example one, so it can't be used anywhere else. Now, let's say we want to return this particular name to wherever the method is called. So in that case, we have to change the type. And the type will be whatever the type of value you are attempting to return. In this case, we're wanting to return a string, a string object. So you would need to change that, okay? And then you'll notice it has an error. Anytime you wanna return something, at the end of the method, the final statement should be return name whatever the whatever um whatever value you're wanting to return or whatever holds that in this case name holds it um or if you wanted to do you could also do this i'm going to comment it out but you could also say return professor all right either or okay which means you would get rid of this portion okay like you would um, comment it out and do the return, all right? But that's just another way. So notice that it's changed. So what that means is when the value, when this method is called, so if I do this, example one, this program will actually work, but what will happen? So instead of running the entire program, I'm just going to execute my example one method here. And you'll notice here, that it is returning a value it's returning a string all right and we're gonna go ahead and just close that is indicating but nothing is going to happen because we didn't do anything with it okay we didn't we just called the method we didn't indicate what we want it to do with that value okay so what you can do here is one create a variable a string object and call it so now when it calls it it'll call it and then whatever you want to do with it in this case we're going to print it all right so let's compile that um i'm going to comment this one out so we're not getting any input for this particular one okay so it's not going to call that method so I'm gonna call the main method, press okay, and you'll see that it prints professor and then it prints professor again, all right, which is the returned value. Um, let's say, just so, because so it's not the exact same thing, um, let's comment this out and let's tell it to return in a string. Notice I'm just returning the actual value. Let's say Professor Davis, semicolon. So notice you can just, you can use these specific um, values. Let's call the main and you'll see that it returns it and prints it, okay? This is one way that you can return whatever is being returned. This is always a tricky portion for students, but if you get continue to get practice, 
you will get a better understanding of how returns work. So whenever you change this particular type here, you're saying that you're gonna send data back. You're sending some information back. And we've talked about anytime you have data, you have to tell the computer what to do with that information. So once that data is returned, I need to store it somewhere so that I can use it, okay? Another thing that you can do is Let's do system.out.println. And instead, we're going to call our method from here. All right, let's comment this out. Comment that out. Uh, oh, example one is the name. So now I'm calling the method from my println statement. So what that means is print the return value the return data so in this case i'm not storing it anywhere i am only printing it now the tricky part about that is i can't use it for anything so if it was a numerical value and i needed it to for an expression or for whatever reason um, i wouldn't be able to because i just printed it so in this case if you want to um use it you will return it and store it inside of a variable all right, but in this case, we're just asking it to print it to the console. And you'll see that it pretty much does the exact same thing, okay? That's another way of calling your method here, all right? Now, um, just for example's sake, I'm going to change this to an int. So let's say I wanna return an integer value. It works the same way. Of course, this won't match because I'm trying to return a string, but it's expecting an integer. So I need to make sure this is an integer. Um, let's say we, we're we gonna return 2023, which is, you know, the year. You notice that it changed. So that means I'm returning an integer value. So it needs to be an integer value that is being returned. So let's go ahead and run that and you'll see that 20, this time 2023 is what is printed because that was the return value same thing if you had if you wanted to store it you would need to create an integer variable here and call the method from here all right and oh is that one and then it'll return it and store it and then you'll use year here okay notice that so it'll basically do the same thing all right um let's say you had a double all right so we would need to change this here um you'll notice that it doesn't have an error because remember we talked about um how double takes presence over um all data types so basically 2023 will be converted to a double by adding 0, 0.0 to the end all right in this case, it's a year, so we wouldn't want to do point zero. All right, so let's use a return a value. Basically, let's do this because I haven't done that. Let's do GPA two point nine zero semicolon, and we're going to return GPA. All right. Um. So now GPA will be the value that's returned. So it's going to return whatever is in GPA, which is two point nine zero and we change the type. Now you'll notice an error here because we're trying to return a double, but we have it going into a variable of type int. We can't do that, it has to match. So here, let's change this to GPA and change this to double, all right? So now, L, let's change this as well. So now we're returning, uh, when this method is called, example one is called, it executes the statements inside. Once it's done, it's going to return whatever stored in GPA, which will be returned back here, 2.90, which will be stored in GPA here, okay? And you'll see that it prints, okay? 2.90. Now, um, I think those are all the topics in this particular chapter. 
Um, something else that you can do is type casting. Let's say instead of um, printing 2.90, GPA is 2.90 or 2.9, say we want to convert it to an int. So in order to do that, type casting right before the, in front of the value that you're wanting to cast upon, you'll put the type. So in this case, I'm asking it to uh, convert, manually convert GPA to an int. So you'll see what it prints out instead. This is typecasting. You can check out the lecture video that discusses it more in detail. You'll see this time it got rid of um, the 0.9. So it cast int. So instead of it being um, printed as 2.90, it's cast as an int. And it truncates the uh, decimal, the remaining portion, and prints the whole number. Okay? Um, so here, uh, what, and this video is getting pretty long. I'll still go ahead and do it, but, uh, um, just real quickly, the, the print F command. So make sure you watch the videos pertaining to the print F command for more, um, for more detail. All right. So print F instead of so print F is like basically instead of print LN, you're gonna use print F. All right. Now it'll still work, but um as you're getting ready to use it for um formatting, you want to make sure that you're indicating how you want it to be formatted. Okay. So the first parameter for the print F command method is the format string, what you want to print. So let's say we're going to print um full name which is going to be a string so you have to use placeholders here inside of the quotation marks all right so that means i'm going to be passing a string so modulus s is going to give me uh allow me to pass a string is this is only a placeholder that means you're going to replace it with an actual um with some actual data okay so full name is what we'll actually pass to replace this placeholder. All right. Now, the next thing is um, we want to make sure we have some space. Print F command doesn't move to the next line. So every time you want to move to the next line, no matter what, even at the end of the statement, you need to use the backslash N. All right. So now it's going to move to the next line. And because we're moving to the next line, we don't need the extra space because if we It'll do exactly what's inside of quotation marks. All right. So now GPA, let's say we're going to do GPA colon, then a space. It's a double. So we'll use the modulus F. So anything with a decimal, you will use modulus, modulus, the modulus F. But you can also indicate how many decimal places. Um, so here we're going to say 0.2 F. So it'll give me two decimal places. All right. So it'll make sure two decimal places are printed there. If you want it to be three, you can put three. If you want it to be one, you can put one, all right? So this here is the placeholder for the GPA value. So when you're ready to pass it, okay? So backslash N, we're gonna move to the next line. And now we're ready to print initial, all right, space. And in this case, um, you know, I, I forgot that I in this particular chapter, I don't um, dwell on it, but you will use the modulus C. So I'll just skip that one. But if you wanted to do um, a single character, you would just do the modulus C, all right? This particular textbook doesn't go in detail for that one, so I won't dwell on it. But if you wanted the year, colon, and for an integer value, it would be the modulus D for any value that is a whole number, an integer, okay? And then anything that you might want to print after the fact, you would still need a um, backslash N so that it'll move to the next line, okay? Because print F doesn't, it's like print. It doesn't move to the next line, so you have to command it. Now, the next parameter, so comma, now you need to pass each variable name that you're wanting to pass. The very first thing it's expecting is a string. So I need, uh-oh. Here. 
full name. All right, comma. The next placeholder that needs to be replaced here is for the GPA. So the variable GPA needs to be here. Okay. Um, comma. And then the next one is year. All right. So the B year, your birth year. So B year, because that's the next placeholder that we have here. All right. And then that's it. I'm going to change this to two decimal places. All right, let's compile. Um, instead of printing this one, I'm not going to call this one. So we'll just call this one method here. Let's clean it up a little. All right, so enter full name. All right, GPA. Notice I'm going to enter several values. So 3.346789. Um, All right. And then middle initial. I should have gotten rid of that because we're not going to print it, but it's okay. And then birth year. Um, let's say 1998. Enter. All right. So notice it prints Professor Days, but notice what print F demand print F does. We did it 0.2, right? We wanted two decimal places. Although I entered all these digits after all these decimal these uh digits after the decimal, um, it only printed two. And notice that it round up for you. Like it'll round it up because the six here, so it allows me to round up and it does it for you. So the print F command is just generally used to um for formatting purposes. Okay. So that concludes um, an example of everything that's discussed in this particular chapter. But please do not just vote, use this video. Oh, please go and watch all the other videos that go into detail for each topic, in spe you know, specifically so that you're comfortable with it. Um, I hope this video is helpful and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.